So thank you guys very much for uh, inspiring me, um, Akai, and the community of Akai and PC on YouTube. I wanted to make a video in return, and I also have to praise you guys for making these tutorials because I had such a hard time getting this screen casting with a mic, with my audio interface, all that stuff. I had a hard time, and uh, let's get started. So what I want and my intention for this is for, I always think maybe there's someone out there like myself who is going about making music just like I am, maybe thinks the way I do, and they have a way that they'd like for this piece of software and this hardware to interact with. And uh, I found a couple of things that I found the MPC software was a bit ill-advised in the design. And I'm going to share that with you. I don't feel like this has been touched by anybody on YouTube, but I may be wrong. But here's my interpretation of what I feel is a workaround or what I want to focus more mostly on is workflow, organization, and efficiency. And I found myself right away getting struggling with the organization, with the sequences. The sequences was quite a big hurdle for me uh, starting out. So I'm going to play this really quick, this song I've been working on that I, I believe is a good prospect. So let me just play it really quick. Awesome. So I have the LCD window here that you see on the MPC screen. It's a very modest screen. I like it. Uh, one tip I have as someone who is making themselves learn the, what is it, the chord wheel, if you will, the chord wheel, chord progressions, music theory, I guess would be the word. Uh, I like to start off as making a sketch. So sequence one would normally usually be my sketch if I'm starting from scratch, either playing a part uh, by hand or using samples and working from there. I make a sketch. That's kind of my thing that I do. And uh, perhaps you guys out there might share that similar uh, approach. So that being said, I'm learning this stuff. So what I do is I find the key since this MPC has such a great, uh, it, I think it's under the pad assign so, uh, system button here. Uh, you can only see it on the hardware. Um, there's an awesome pad assign and it lets you tap into the proper notes for a scale or a uh, triad chord or a triad and a seventh chord and you can change the scale as well as the key so i do to help me since i'm making myself <laughs> it's really hard i don't really want to learn that stuff i've always avoided it but what i do is i find the key and the scale that i love the, in that moment in my approach and then I label that sequence as the key, the scale and then I s set it as sketch that's what I name it from there, this is where the meat comes from or this is where we're going in the direction of my workflow video is where I go from there is a sort of sequence of me going from that sketch to expanding the sketch to a song. So what you see here is my drums. So if I go down to, actually I can just hit the track plus and minus. So then I got a synth stab. I name these things as I go once I start getting a feel for what the song, the song's identity is. So, um, drums that's named 
the synth stab that's name and, and try to name the track and the program for continuity sorry that's another key thing is continuity workflow and organization those are key things that i think are going to make you i promise you will make you more efficient more organized and less headaches because this was a hurdle for me i'll tell you that um learning the sequences the tracks the programs the way everything's split up is is uh intelligent although it doesn't exactly all work very well in other words if i name here the synth if i name this uh who would you, what would you say um if i name this the bank because that's the name of the plugin i'm using in this case i would personally like akai to make it so that when you name the track or the sp the program which I have since stab, I would like by default for it to either ask me if you'd like the continu continuity of what you named it to be spread by the track and program name. That's what I would like because if you see now, now if I go here, I have to go here and call this the bank now just to have the continuity that I would like. And I'll show you why this is important later. So I would like it, like I said, just to highlight or just to reiterate, I'd like it to be the in the point where I'd like to go to track, name it, name this. Okay, this is the identity of this particular instrument here. This is my synth stab. And then if I hit enter, it would also go to the program where it says the bank. I'd like it to also by default or at least ask me or give me an option to also have this automatically named the synth stab in my case here and I'll show you why that's important in uh, a follow-up here so then I have my chords or chord pads I have plucks I have guitar bass and then I have a female vocal which is a sample that I have on the pads here And uh, that's how I start off. So from the sketch and then naming my tracks and programs for the sake of continuity and organization. And this is why it matters. This is why it's important. Because what I do in my workflow is now I want to make the song. I want to expand the sketch. And I want to transition from from starting from scratch and making a sketch and I want to transition into okay let's make this a full length song or a full length beat a 16 bar thing without losing my original thought so I can always have that to go back so if I screw right here sequence 2 up I can always go back to sequence 1 where I made my sketch and since I named the key and the scale if I decide to come here and go to a, let me select a plugin. Let's see. So if I were to go to here and I decided I wanted to go to a different key, as I, as I did here, I actually went to G um, as experimentation or maybe making a bridge or a chorus or intro I always know which key I was in because I can reference back to sequence one okay I was originally in B flat Lydian now here's my key thought here is what I do after I had done all these things I mentioned just now I made sequence one. This is what I do. And this is so key. What I do is I go to edit sequence. And then I go to copy sequence. So I will go to edit sequence, then copy sequence. Because I want a copy of sequence one and go to two or three or four, whichever it is, just so I can expand my sketch idea without 
ruining it without botching it pretty much. And also, like I said, to transition over into expanding the song. So now I will go to, if I hit my pad, pad five, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to do an unused in the, and on this, um, for the tutorial's sake, I'll go to four, unused, and then do it. And I want to make, in my mind, I'm probably thinking right now, okay, I want to either experiment on a different thought or I want to do a bridge or I want to do a chorus or maybe I realized that what I had sketched was a chorus. Now I want to make a verse. So I want to change the key or I want to change the patterns, anything. So what I do is now I'm on sequence four. If you can see here, sequence four. <clears throat> and here's what I do. I want to start fresh, but I want to keep the naming that I made all that. I, I did all that groundwork. I named everything plucks. I did all that groundwork. I can go here now and, ch and change if I went to a different key or let's just say this is my intro now. All right. This is why it's important to me because all of my continuity is here. Track one is drums. Track two, I'll show you up here. Track two is still synth stab. Track three is still my chord pads. Track four is still my plucks. Track five is still my guitar. And track six, my bass, and so on and so forth. And I need that continuity because I'll show you what it looks like to start from, to start a new sequence. It's very frustrating if, if you're new to this, this learning curve, it's very difficult. I'll show you the other option. So if I go, let me see if I can remember this actually. Okay, I remember how to do this now. So if I go up here and go to an unused sequence, I don't have that continuity here. So I'm going to track one, track two, track three, track four, track five, and I don't have that continuity. I, it's all saying unused. So what I had experienced this, which was so frustrating, which I wish Akai had stepped up and not, not to knock them down or anything, but I, this is frustrating to me. So now what I had experienced in the past starting out was when if I go to, what is it, like export, let it, let's let it save here. It's auto-saving now. And then auto save is done. Cool. All right. So now if I go to let me treat let me see it's been a while since I did this. If I go to audio mix down and then take it to Pro Tools in my in my case, now I have all kinds of mixed up tracks. I'll have like a chord pad on track one for the first. I don't know half of the song and since <clears throat> I had to make a new sequence and I didn't know okay which one was it which one was track two in my previous sequence was it a guitar was it a plug-in was it a key group was it a drum was it midi I have to like either go back reference number one and then rename it and that's just very very frustrating and it's, it's just a killer for your continuity, your workflow, and then for your end result when you give it to somebody else to mix it or you want to mix it yourself or master it. Very frustrating. So trust me, do it this way and you can't go wrong. At least give it a try. And another key thing for this besides that is, uh, let's see. Oh, here's a reason for doing it this way. Or sorry, not a reason for doing it, but a follow-up on the thought of doing it this way. So if I go to my intro, this is a follow-up for, for what I was saying about starting a new thought. So now I have 
my copied sequence here on sequence four, which I renamed intro because I feel like that was the direction I wanted to go. But I have all this playing and I don't want this. So here's a follow up with what to do after you follow these instructions. So now what you do is you start from one, track one, all the way to the last track you did. And this is what I do. I go to erase which is a button on the MPC right by the armrest, I go to erase and then I say do it. Then I go to the next one, I say erase, do it. And this might seem like a painstaking process, which is, I feel like the way the MPC software should run, it, it should give you the option to when you do copy a sequence, if you want to keep the hierarchy or sorry the naming that you did and transfer it over but not copy the events I wish that was the way to do it um, I think there is a way but for some reason it, I feel like this works better because I, I norm I just really do this so that I could have the continuity of my track naming for the sake of organization because look how beautiful this is this just looks it's awesome to have that comfort that track one three four five will always be what i started off as and i won't later on the, down the road when i'm when i'm experiment, ex experimenting with different sequences and different thoughts i'm not like scratching my i'm not like gouging my eyes out trying to figure out what was track two three sequences ago damn it i messed it up and then you go to the mix down and you got crap or you got confusion and then you have to edit it some more. This is my workaround. So now I had erased pretty much everything. And then I'm going to cut the video short here by saying this was my thought here. So then I was like, okay, well, I want to make like a break there, but I want to change the key. I want it to feel different. So I did exactly what I'm instructing you here by naming all those things, keeping your continuity, keeping it stress-free and erasing all of the events, but keeping the programs, the names, it's all a lot of legwork to keep that all intact. And this is the way to do it. Trust me raced all the events, started fresh, changed the key, named it a different key, in this case, G, Lydian, G Lydian now. I can erase the word sketch, but I'll play you something else that I'm kind of working on right now. <laughs> formulate the song on sequences with the song mode of course I'm sure you're familiar with the song mode and uh, this video I hope inspires you and provides for you a workflow for that consistency that continuity that efficiency and I just I want you guys to make awesome music but I also don't want you guys to be frustrated by the software. Um, I hope this helps and I hope it inspires you guys just like many of you guys on YouTube inspired me. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate the work you guys done. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>